You looking forward to training? Yeah, sort of. It's going to be a nice short session, isn't it? Short and snappy, I'd say. Yeah, I don't think there'll be too much involved. Will we do the roller coaster? <laughs> Dizzy. We'll have to bring a big performance now, it's we're well able. Yeah, I think we're ready. Yeah. Will history be made here today for Dixborough? The last time they appeared in the final, they lost out. They're taking on a Vincent's team that are looking to put titles back to back. Best luck. Best luck. Best luck. Best luck. Best luck. In. As the ball is thrown in straight away, as uh, Vincent's looking to settle into this game. Chance for uh, Nashimar. Three points to one then. Ah, oh, there's nothing in that. No strike, no strike. Have a hook. Come on, come on, come on, anymore. Right. Right, who's this? Yes! Yes! Get that ball in your hand and drive it on. Go on, Murph. Win it! Vincent's badly need a score, you would feel. Trying to get it on here towards Ashimar. There we go, five points apiece. It's still a bit of a chess match. We're going to get quick ball into the full forward line. That doesn't work, it's over the bar. Power play again. Go on, it. Come on, Irish, let's drive it on. Arno, played inside. Hedrington having the shot, stuck in the net. E for Prendergast with an opportunity to level the game. Yes! Come on! Oh, Hedge off, brilliant. More again. Ava, brilliant. More. Come on. Over the top! Yes! It's a free in and a chance for Dick Spread to go in front. Come on! Ashmar sending this ball in. Has it gone wide? It has. Yes! Am I going for it? I wouldn't. I'd leave it to you, but I'd take the point game. This could be a key turning point in this game. She went low for it. I think there was a defender on that back post. Back you go, back you go. Again, go on. I'm delighted to be joined now by AIB ambassador and Camogie star Nebo Callaghan of Sarsfields and Cork ahead of this weekend's AIB Camogie All Ireland Club Championship semi finals. And also for the release of the full first episode of Meet Hashtag The Toughest, a new content series from AIB that will showcase some of the final stages of this year's AIB from all the All-Ireland Club Championships through footage that has been captured by cameras worn by the players for the first time 
in Gaelic games. Neve, it's great to, to have you on. How's things? How are you keeping? Things are good, yeah, all good. I'm looking forward to the weekend now. It's a busy time, but it's great. So looking forward to it now, yeah. Ah, brilliant. And the footage captured by cameras worn by the, the jersey, the players, what do you think of all that? Do you think it's something that the, the Gaelic Games needs? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's 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 great to showcase, you know, the speed, the intensity, you know, the physicality of the game now. Um, so it's great to show it. Um, and I was only laughing earlier. I was thinking about it. You know, if you showed it to a few hurlers on the ditch, it might silence them a bit too. You know, some some of those fellows shouting in abuse, they might be lying quietly down if they saw what was involved. You know, a bit more. So yeah, no, it's it's a great idea, and and anything like that can only promote the game further, which is great. That's it, and it's all about promoting the game and maybe getting people to appreciate it a little bit more as well, and what goes into it, and you know the skill, the intensity. Some of the games in the provincial finals were were, were brilliant, especially this time of year. It's it's tough conditions, but it might make people maybe appreciate the game as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know it might as well give player you know, young girls or, or, or players who, who are, you know, not sure of what's involved, a great idea of what is involved or, you know, um, just showcase it that bit more to, to to players like that, you know. So it can only it can only be a positive thing. Um, and I, I was only looking at some of the footage there before I came on to you um, and just even, you know, going out training alone, even just show, showing that and showing what's involved and, and, and uh, it, it's great. It's, it's it's a great idea. Yeah, that's it. It's the behind the scenes that we all love to see. No matter what it is, everybody loves the behind the scenes <laughs> part of it. <laughs> and just, yeah, just recently a, a monster champion, which is is brilliant. You know, getting over drum and inch is not a an easy thing to do. They're a team that have been there thereabouts for for years now, so a team with a lot of experience. So it must have been great to get over the line. Yeah, it was, you know, and um, we knew that coming up against them at the weekend, you know, we knew what we were up against. Um, and I suppose, you know, every game for us was, you know, we hadn't won in Munster before, you know, we won a county in 2019 and we lost our first game to Drum and Inch. Um, so, um, you know, for us this year, it was it was just taking every game as it came um, and to get to the final and to play Drum and Inch and to get the better of the man today was 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 great you know and it was you know it was a performance that we knew we had in us as well we probably felt we hadn't played to the best of our ability against um true clonara and newcastle west but um we knew we had a good performance in us and you know thankfully it came um against a, a great side like drum and inch yeah came at the right time that's for sure <laughs> and for people that might not know tell us a little bit about your club um, yeah, so I suppose um, we have, um, we come from, um, there's a, a small little area, well it's not so small anymore, it was small when I was growing up, but it's definitely, um, after getting a lot bigger now, um, Riverstown would be, say, the area for um, the hurling and camogie grounds or the pitch. Um and then you'd have the the football club which is Glenmire Football Club, um over near the church. So you have two separate um clubs as such, um and um I suppose yeah, there's definitely um there's a there's a big catchment area now which is only which has only benefited us more, you know, um um and I suppose um. You know, uh, home to home to some some greats, more, none more so than Teddy Mac. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, um, uh, it's a club that I suppose it's it is very much based like all clubs really, but around community and um, you know, there's a lot of links there between our our team and say even the hurlers and you know cousins and brothers and um sisters things like that. So yeah, um, you know. Um, definitely a club that developed a lot over the last few years and um, has um, a very good underage system going at the moment, you know, with lots of kids going down every every weekend and um, thankfully all to benefit benefit us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just when you were mentioning the, the football club and that as well, I don't know if you saw 
and Fianna Club in Meath. Um, they're in the All Ireland Intermediate semi final for football and camogie, which yes. is unbelievable to, to be able to do. But they're being asked to play a game within 24 hours. And I know within Cork, they've faced these problems time and time again with so many dual players. What do you think about that? And what do you think needs to be done for this, I suppose, to, to not happen? Um, yeah, so look, I suppose it's the exact same for our um, for our intermediate footballers. You know, they're playing again out, and you know the the last um, the last three matches we've played, they've been playing um, the following day as well, or the day before us. So I mean, we had girls there last weekend that got on a plane to London on Friday night um, and played an All Ireland uh, quarter final. And flew home that Saturday night and got up to 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 drive to Tip the following day to play with us. So you know we're we're well used to it ourselves. There's nine, there's about nine or ten girls on the football panel that are with ourselves. So um, and it'll be the same for them this weekend. Should they're playing on the on the Sunday, we're playing on the Saturday. So um, I suppose look, um, I I know it's 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 definitely frustrating, but. Um, I suppose you have to look at too. There is a, a very short window there this time of year to play with, and um, that is one thing to consider. But yeah, definitely, I suppose look, it 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 has to come down to the communication from both associations, um, and trying to I suppose listen to the players themselves who are involved in this, um, uh, and trying to get the best out of it. I mean, even if it maybe came down to you know playing a fixture of a Wednesday night. And then having the 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 football or the camogie on the Saturday or Sunday just to give girls that bit of a break, you know. Um, I mean, I don't play both, but I like coming home after that monster final the next day. Yesterday, waking up, you're waking up sore. You're waking up fairly better than bruised, and these girls are waking up feeling that way and facing into playing another match, you know. So, um, definitely, I feel. You know, it has to come from the communication there from both sides. There has to be has to be some way of of of. I know there's 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 fixture congestion at this time of year, but trying to listen to the players, I think, is a huge thing. I know sometimes I feel as though I don't know if the players themselves are being listened to, um, especially as you said, like in Cork Mogi and football, even this year alone with some of those fixture classes and and having to make a player which is ridiculous, you know, having to potentially make a player decide to play which one they're going to play on that day, you know, in this day and age, it shouldn't be coming down to that. Um, so, yeah, it is unfortunate, but I suppose, you know, um, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come from us. We're not picking the fixtures, you know, we're going out and we're playing yeah. and we're, we're happy to play. So, yeah, it is unfortunate. Yeah, because it, what it sounds like is, it punishes the player for being a dual player and yeah. how are you going to get the best out of yourself from that second game it, it's impossible to play at the level you want to play at and you put all this time and you know an all ireland semi final it, it doesn't come around very often so it, it must it must have been very tough for those girls and you're saying they have to do it again this weekend yeah, this weekend. So yeah, this weekend they're playing in the in the intermediate final or sorry the intermediate semi final. So yeah. I wasn't yeah, so they're playing the they're playing the, those girls. So yeah, yeah. So um yeah, so that's on Sunday in Mallow, and we're playing Saturday in Mallow. So yeah, they they can nearly bring their sleeping bag <laughs> down with them stay there. for the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah. See that that's just hard, and you must have noticed in them as well when they're after playing and flying from London. You must have noticed maybe they're. I don't know, they're tired. Yeah, but you know what? I was saying it earlier um, in one of the other interviews. It's funny, like, it's not funny. Our girls, um, their attitude to it is remarkable, really. You know, they don't sit around feeling sorry for themselves. They they get up and get on with it. And, and it's really admirable, you know. They don't they don't sit and dwell in it. And I suppose their view of it is they can't really, you know, unless there's going to be something resolved higher up, you know, what else can they do? So um, their attitude to it has been, you know, uh, and talking to a few of them, you know, that they just kind of have no choice really, but to get on with it. Uh, I know that's not, don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating that in either day. They're not, they're not saying, look, should we just have to get on with it and accepting it? You know, they're not, but I suppose, you know, um, 
you, it, there's a fine line there too, you know, it comes to they want to play, they want to be focused on this game. You know, it takes a lot of preparation, mental preparation, focusing in on a game without having this kind of nonsense going on in the background that you don't need, you know, and they've kind of really chosen to to just kind of drive on and focus on on, on the controllables and what they can control, you know, um, which is just, it, it's a great sign of them. It does, yeah, it just shows their character and, You'd hope in, in years to come we see change because you yeah. don't want to see a dual player dying out, that is for sure. But you do play Sarsfields of Galway in the semi final, so the, the reign and all Ireland champions. So you know you, you're going to have a, a tough test there. Yeah, oh God, yeah. Uh, geez, we'd be under no illusions of that. Um, it was funny, I was even, a few of us went for recovery last weekend and some of the younger girls, um, you know, they're they're doing their leaving cert and they were laughing, they were saying, God, this time last year, I was watching the McGraths play uh, in the in the final or whatever, you know. So, um, yeah, definitely, you know, um, they've, they've great players, great quality there. Um, but I suppose for us, you know, it is it is bonus territory. You know, we are really looking forward to it, and that's not to say, geez, we we will give it everything we have. Um, but yeah, geez, we'd be under no illusions there. You know, when you've been there and you've you've done it, which they have, you know, it, it it's a huge help. You know, for us, it, it is new territory, complete new territory. So um, we are really looking forward to it. You know, we're going to prepare as best we can for it. Um. And hopefully it'll be a great game. And for you, Neve, and for the club, what would it mean to get over the line and get to an All Ireland final in Pro Park? <laughs> I think do you know what? Um, it's it's probably it's funny looking back at it. I I was uh, on the 2018 Cork panel that won that All Ireland that year, and um, you know it's a it's an unbelievable feeling. But I, I just think there's something that's so special about potentially going there with your club, you know, and, and playing in Crow Park with your club and potentially going up the Hogan steps, which, you know, to lift the cup with your club. There's something so special. And I just feel, you know, even when we won at the weekend, you know, you're looking out onto the crowd at people who've been there from day one, you know, since I was small, involved in the club. And they're the ones that, you know, they put in the hard slog. They're there washing jerseys, doing all the, the hard work behind the scenes. And kind of when you see them, it really hits home to you, you know, how much it means. And I suppose for for you know to get there it would be it would definitely be one of the most special medals that I, I think you could get to be honest with you absolutely well Neve, thanks so much for your time wish you all the best of luck now in the semi <laughs> thank <laughs> you yeah. I'm delighted to be joined now by ALB ambassador Camogie Star Kira Phelan of Bixborough in Kilkenny ahead of this weekend's ALB Kamogi All-Ireland Club Championship semi-finals and for the release of the first full episode of Meet Hashtag The Triffids a new content series from AIB that will showcase some of the final stages of this year's AIB Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships through footage captured by cameras worn by the players for the first time in Gaelic games Kira it's great to speak to you and congratulations for First off, a Leinster champion. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So what was it like with the with the cameras? I know it was Eva Prendergast who, who mm. wore it. So were you very aware of it or I'm sure you had your mind on the job? <laughs> yeah, well, she kind of, she trialed it out on the Friday night at training and there's a few cameras around, but we just kind of said to, to focus on what the match was and, and what we were, we were we were doing. But Aoife said she there was no issue with wearing it that it was comfortable and uh she was she was grand she she wore it then the day of the match the the only issue was they had to put the hole in the jersey but sure that wasn't too bad um but she wore it the day and and there was no issue there was no um we didn't take any notice of it or anything like that I haven't seen any footage of it but I'm looking forward to seeing it and seeing what it brings to Camogie and and showing the intensity and how quick the game is from the player's perspective. Yeah, exactly. Do you think it's something that maybe should be seen more often in Gaelic games? Yeah, definitely. I think um like the cameras are brilliant and when cam when uh when the matches are recorded they're they're brilliant from different angles, but there's nothing like a player cam and, and having it on the person who's playing. And I suppose for Aoife, like she was on the freeze as well and we were fortunate enough to win. So to have that and that that footage of her and her own 
preparation coming into the game and, and playing and taking the freeze, like I think for for like the future, I think it's going to be massive. Yeah, and it was such a good game to do it in. Mm. Like the the skill, the intensity, like it was come over at its best. I don't know, did it feel like that for you in the game? Yeah, well, we knew that Vincent's an unbelievable side and, and winning the Leinster the last two years, like we knew that it wasn't going to be easy. And I suppose going into the game, we kind of knew that it was going to be it was going to be tough, but we kept going and, and kept kind of plucking at it. And and I know they came out of half in the second half and scored a goal and a point, but we kept our heads down and, and kept going. And I suppose that's that's what will show on the player cam how, how kind of intense and, and how tough it is. And I know Barry was saying that Aoife got a hit, a shoulder into the chest right on the camera. So that'll be nice to see. And, and it's good like that it's right on the player as well. Yeah, because that's what you want. You want to show the, the physicality of the game. You know, Kamogi has been calling for years to have more physicality that has come into the game mm. now. So you want to get that out there to let people know, look, this is, this is what it's about. This is what you're seeing. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. It's like the intensity of the game and, and the skill of the game has improved the last couple of years. And I think it's it's going in the right way and people, it's more physical and they're allowing it to be more physical with the new rules and stuff that could be implemented. And I think that's, the, the player cam is really going to showcase that and, and hopefully it'll showcase it worldwide. Like it'd be very good to show this these this player cam to, to the people that don't even live in Ireland and show them how intense that Komogi and, and Hurling can be. Yeah, of course. And so in the end, it was 12 points to, to Dixborough, St. Vincent's one seven. And as you said, it was four points down at the start of that second half. So you really had to dig deep, I'm sure, at that point. Yeah, and like I'd say we kind of we were kind of on our toes then at that stage they had scored the goal and the point and what we were doing all year is, is look there's 60 minutes in a game and and not to panic and the lads really kind of drilled that into us from the start like that if we're a point or two points or at, in that case it was four points down there's plenty of time on the clock to just settle ourselves not to panic and that's what we did and, and the girls like like Rachel Dowling and, and Amy's Clifford's point was just unbelievable like and they're only young girls on our team and they really stood up like the younger ones just stood up massively on the day, Katie Burney, Freedon, like they just, they, they kind of pushed us on as well, like as the older girls. So yeah, like I think everyone who was playing on that day kind of just said, relax, we're nowhere four points down, but we're well capable of getting it back. And thankfully we did. Yeah, I spoke to Elisa before the final and I just asked her to tell me a little bit about the club and what it means to her. What does club mean to you, her? <clears throat> oh, sure. It means everything. And I know Eve would probably say the same thing. Like it's, it's where you've grown up, like it's you're playing with your sisters and your cousins. And I know Jenny Clifford spoke in an interview about how, how close we are. And I think even if you look at our management, there's three brothers and a cousin who are our management team. So like starting with them and then you have like me and my, my two sisters play and the Cliffords, Jenny, Tara and Amy. You have the O'Gorman sisters, Sarah and Ava and cousins on the team. And everyone is so tight knit and it's kind of like a country team in, in the town, like we're all so close, so friendly, went to school together, played together underage, played with Kenny together. And But winning with the club is something else. And the last five years, winning three counties and a Leinster, like we've really pushed on. And, and it's like that when that final whistle went and the, uh, on Sunday there, it was just an unbelievable feeling. And like to win the first Leinster across both codes in our club, the lads and the girls, like it, it was just unbelievable. And the support that we got from the club and the younger groups and past players, we got a message from a past player. Um, they keep, keep sending us messages for the county final in Kenny and the Leinster. And it just means so much to have past players like saying, geez, like th this is what we wanted when we were playing and we never got to experience it. And they're at every match. They're backing us every day. So it, that's that's literally what it means. Like playing with your family and your sisters and getting support from like every every side of, of the club. Oh, right. It must be pretty special to have these memories with your sisters. Like, maybe it's not going to hit you now, but it's something that, like, in years to come, that you went on and did this is, is pretty incredible. Yeah, like, the three of us, like, my brother played with, with the Burr as well, and, and the three of us playing together on the team. And I know myself and Eve were playing on the wings, and Eve was on the panel as well, but it's just, it is, it's something special. And, and every day, like, we go to training together. I'm not living at home, but I still pick them up, and I still... We still go to training together and we go travel to matches together. And like, I know that Ema and Eva are, are my sisters, but I feel like the rest of them, I've grew, grown up with them and they're they're like my sisters as well. Like we fight like sisters and we play like sisters together. So no, it, it's very special and, and memories that, yeah, in, in years, years, like it's brilliant at the moment, but in, in years to come, like we'll be looking back saying, 
what an unbelievable time like that we got to got to share with like our families and friends and stuff do you think that's what the difference is? Like, I'd often wonder, what's the difference between Dixra and a club that hasn't won championships and hasn't progressed? Obviously, you have the talent, but I mm. think a lot more than talent comes into it, you know, to be able to go on and progress. Do you think it is that we're so close knit? Oh, absolutely. Like, we kind of last year we lost, and it's so hard to get out of the Kenny County. Like, we lost by a point in, in the county final to a brilliant Thomas Town team. And, we we knew we kind of left it behind that day and we knew that there was there's a lot more in us and we went on and a lot of us went on to Clenny, but we were always kind of wanted to get back to the club and just like kind of figure out what we did wrong last year. And we had a massive players meeting um before we went back to the club and we kind of brought our what we thought that we did wrong and we spoke with the management and not even us as as players were kind of saying, look, this is what we did wrong, this is what we need to improve on. Our management actually had things to say and we worked together as a unit like and kind of said these are the things that we all need to improve on there was no blaming there was no saying the management this or the players did this it was all like unity and we came together and we kind of just said look these are things we need to work on and we need to put 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 it to the start here now this year and in fairness we did like we we just decided that we're going to absolutely give it everything and I know that we got David Carroll and other Carroll brother came in this year and He's been unbelievable. Like Jenny spoke as well about our training sessions are just the intensity in them has increased. We barely get a water break now. So mm -hmm. it's just it's the intensity of 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 training and and playing with your club and stuff. This year we really kind of pushed on and, and obviously that's that's shown when in the Leinster, but we want to keep going now. Like the Leinster was brilliant, but and it's probably bonus territory, but we kind of want to push on now and see how far we can get. Just when you mentioned the training there, do you find it harder to play this time of year? Um, yeah, like it's obviously colder and 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 it's pitches are harder to get and to protect them. But like it's 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 great crack going and train with your club at this time of year. I know that yeah. the girls with Kenny are back slogging it out, running and doing fitness tests, and we're still playing away with the club. So like it's it's unbelievable and and to keep going until Christmas would be something special. But for now, we'll focus on this weekend and and keep going and. The training will enjoy it, even if it is tough, but it's unbelievable to be playing this time with your club. So next up then, it's Lockheed Old Shamrock. So we lost to champions. Uh, they were in the All-Ireland final last year. They lost out by a goal that day to Sarsfield. So a brilliant team. So we know yourself, you're going to have a, a tough test there. Oh, absolutely. And I was actually, I went to the All-Ireland final last year. Two of the girls, my friends were playing with, with James Stevens. So we ended up staying for the senior one. And like, it was an unbelievable match. Like I, I thought Lockheed were going to catch Sarsfields in the end um they're going to be such a tough team and, and they've some experience like I've we played against um the Antrim girls and a lot of them who played with Antrim and they're it's a quick paced team and I know they're young too and they mightn't have as much experience like as other teams that are in it but they're after pushing on the last few years and they're gonna it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough but we're up for the challenge what would it mean to you and to the club to be able to make it to an all Ireland final go correct Oh, it'd be unbelievable. Like it's it's kind of stuff that you dream of. Like um, we kind of we we were saying it last year. Like wouldn't it be unbelievable to get there? And sure, we didn't even get out of the Kilkenny. So I suppose this year we're kind of just taking it like game by game. We started off with the league, said we'd go hard at the league, won the league. Then we're against very tough teams in Kenny with the county, and then came out, and then we were saying, okay, Leinster is our next focus. So we're kind of just taking it game by game at the moment. But obviously, yeah, it'd be. It'd be unbelievable to represent your club in Co Park um on our final club day. So um look we're we are we are looking forward to this weekend, but it would be it'd be unbelievable to play in Co Park with your club. I'm delighted to be joined now by AIB ambassador Camogie star Roshi McCormack of Lockheed Shamrocks of Antrim ahead of this weekend's AIB Camogie All Ireland Club Championship semi finals and also for the release of the first full episode of Meet Hashtag the Toughest, a new content series from AIB that will showcase some of the final stages of this year's AIB Camogie All Ireland Club Championships through footage captured by cameras worn by the players for the first time in Gaelic games. Roisin, it's great to get a chance to speak to you. How is things? Yeah, not too bad. Exciting times. How are you? Yeah, it is exciting times. You're you're back where you want to be in an All Ireland semi final. Yeah, it's been a long wait since last year. Obviously, speaking to you after the All Ireland final, a few tears were shed, but it's been a long time since. But plenty of improvement, and 
yeah plenty of excitement coming on to this weekend's match yeah like last year when I spoke to you I'm sure you thought this moment here now of being in a, an All-Ireland semi-final felt like such a long time away but it comes around probably quicker than you, you even think yeah, I suppose, obviously, between the split, obviously, with the county and the club season, like, you don't realise how quick it maybe does come in. Well, especially for us county players, like, um, alternating between teams. But I'd say for the club girls that have just been waiting around all, literally all year since maybe pre-season, February, March, um, for these days. But thankfully, the time has came around. So I think, I suppose, now it's just kind of embracing it and taking in the moment and taking each match as it comes. Yeah, and I don't want to have to bring you back to that All-Ireland final, but what a game. You know, I'll definitely always remember the, the scale and the intensity of that game. There was just a goal in it in the end. How much of that final and the hurt of that final have you challenge, like inner challenge this year? Um, Yeah, it was a heartbreaking day, I suppose. And all All-Ireland finals don't come around too easy. Um. We did come through or come from that match with a lot of positives. Um, obviously, like plenty of experience. Um, the Sarsfields girls have obviously with Galway and club. So, um, no, we took a lot from the match, and we've kind of we've tried to adapt our game a wee bit more, and obviously continue on with strength and conditioning throughout the year just to stay that extra bit stronger and that extra bit fitter. So, the whole idea is just kind of maintain. The, our peak performance and kind of implement it into each game as it comes but no everything's going well at the moment yeah you had a great win in the Ulster final over Leitrim Fontenoy's very comfortable in the end but I'm sure winning an Ulster title um, that's pretty pretty special oh okay, yes so like Ulster finals don't come around easy as well as you know with our past five or six years in a row Slack Nil were obviously the ones that were dominating the championship at the time but no, it's nice to see, or nice to get two, obviously, medals in the back pocket now. And it's kind of good to say to ourselves, but also everyone around us, that last year maybe wasn't a fluke with winning the Ulster title and that we kind of have maintained status and are capable of going on and pushing into the championship and being successful as everybody else. So, no, it's good to have them medals and look can always look back in the great days and say that, you experience the wins and the losses and you come out the better end. And like I did get a chance to come down and visit the club and see what it's all about. But for people that maybe don't know, tell us a little bit about the club. So Luck Hill is a very small parish and there's basically one or two roads in it. Um, there is the different areas now, but um, there's not, there's maybe about 2,000 people, I'd say. Um, but yeah, you're not playing hurling in Loch Gill, what are you doing, as everybody says? <laughs> um, born in the hurl and um, no, plenty of success between hurling and Kabogi teams and look, hurling kind of is the be all and end all and you have that sense of community with it being a small parish and everybody does back you. But also like within Antrim, it's a small enough county and you know everybody. So you have that support from the club and the county to kind of just push on into the championship. Say for the likes of the hurling this weekend, obviously Cushion Dollar playing against Slack Neil again. Obviously, Slackney being a big rival, um, will be obviously on the cushion doll and Antrim side of it. But no, like there's plenty of support there, and it's kind of a great club and county to be within. So I'm not, I don't have any complaints. Yeah, and what will it mean to your club now to be back in an All Ireland semi final? Last year, obviously, I think there was maybe a wee bit of shock. It never really sunk in, like that period of between the Ulster and um All Ireland final kind of went in fairly quick um, and then obviously in the lead up to Christmas but I think being back into it again like um, everybody kind of expects you to be back in there and um, we everybody now has that belief in us so no like the next few weeks will be very important for us as a team but also the management and the parish so kind of just take each day as it comes and make the most of it like these days don't come around too often so the whole idea is just kind of get the performances in and hopefully get a medal under the belt. And do you feel the growth in Antrim Komogi that, you know, your team is representing Ulster, Lockheed Shamrocks of Antrim are the team that is, is representing Ulster. Like that's a, a pretty good point to prove for, for Antrim Komogi that it is growing. Yeah, I suppose like, under, well, our own club team has been nominating the championship now uh, for the past while. And um, look, Slack Nil had plenty, they had their time and they represented Ulster the best they could and they, they won their All-Irelands and they proved that Ulster Camogie is in a good place, but 
also for ourselves, um, obviously Antrim, us getting to an all Ireland quarter final last year was a massive achievement, but it's just nice to show that there is within the North, but also in Antrim, like there is the Camogie standard there and that, and like don't underestimate us basically. Um, we have the talent and we have the players and it's just it's whoever performs best on the day. I don't know if you've seen any of the footage yet that is going to go out from AIB. I am on the players wearing the cameras on their jerseys. Um, I've just seen some of it there and it's brilliant. It actually shows up close and personal exactly what the, the players do, the physicality, the skill, all of that. Do you think it's a good thing to have this in Gaelic games? Yeah, so I actually did see it. Um, seen a clip of it, and it looks very good. Um, I'm actually very happy with it, and I would be very excited to obviously get to use it myself. Just um, it was obviously Eva Pendergast and Ash Mar that was using the cameras, and we got to see the insights of their game and how they play. Um, obviously both free takers as well. So getting to see them stand with plenty of composure over the ball and being able to just hit it over the bar, and uh, just so casually like it's. It's nice to see, and obviously, as a spectator or someone that's past their time of playing in the Gaelic games, like they get to look back and see the player's perspective and how the game has particularly evolved and what exactly it takes for a player to play at our standard in all Ireland or in provincial titles in all Ireland semis and finals. So, no, it's a good implementation, and it'll be it's really good for the Gaelic games, just even promoting Camogie and even if it is brought into the likes of Gaelic football and hurling and stuff too, like, no, it's a great implementation. Yeah, absolutely. It's only going to grow the game, you would think. And we've talked so much about having more physicality in Camogie. We're starting to see that now. And I think maybe with people seeing a bit more of the insight into the game from these cameras, they'll maybe appreciate the game a bit more. Oh, definitely. Like, I think that will bring in a lot more people to see what exactly goes on on the pitch. Because obviously, what's seeing the match on the pitch compared to in the stand is a completely different game. You see a lot more pro- possibly, but no, it'll, it'll definitely grow the sport and hopefully bring in a lot more attraction. Yeah, absolutely. And do you find hurling this time of year, is it harder or do you, because it's obviously a lot colder, the pitches are a lot harder. Well, looking back in the all Ireland semi-final last year that we played in snow, this year is <laughs> <laughs> championship season and playing in the good summer days but no like um that's just the way it works out you just have to adapt your game I know it does take maybe a wee bit of an extra longer <laughs> longer warm-up to kind of get into the game you know when you can't feel your hands and plenty of hand warmers running about but um like it's just the time of the year and you just have to manage with it and just take each game as it comes if it's cold just you know you just as my dad would say, you just have to suck it up. <laughs> yeah, you have to deal with it. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm winning like your county championship, the provincial championship, now in an All Ireland semi final. What do you think is the difference between you and all the other teams that your team makes it this far? Obviously, you have the talent. There, there's no doubt about that. But there has to be something a bit more to it as well. That's a hard question. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's a very hard question. It might um, be the fact, as you said, the community, the close knit, that sort of thing as well. Yeah, I don't know what obviously all the other clubs are like, but I just know with ourselves that we've won so many championships together. Like we've had the good days together, but we've also had so many not so good days together. The likes of slapping in the matches and stuff. So and even the All Ireland final last year. So no, we're we are a big family. Like we like look, it is small. You you're friends with everyone in it. So you would deem yourself all as family and you're all in it together. So it's just kind of, we stick by each other in the good days and the bad days. So just, and obviously getting each other over the line, like it's, you just need that extra bit of motivation from teammates and the community. So no, I think that's what kind of makes the difference within our team. Um, in the All-Ireland semi-final now, you're going to play Dixborough of Kilkenny. You know, obviously any team that comes out of Kilkenny are, are a strong team and you probably watched Dixborough as well in, in their provincial game um i've seen a few clips of the game but particularly for myself i don't look into it too much i feel like i near start to overthink things so yeah kind of try to take the game when it comes and try to adapt but no they're a good side and obviously i said this before that they are from the hurling co- uh, country like it's kilkenny as we say and they have what they have all out of medals with county at senior and stuff so plenty of experience and plenty of talented girls within that panel so 
we know what's to come. We know it's going to be a tough battle, but as I say, it's going to come down to who wants it more. And what would it mean to you, Roisin, to be back in Crow Park in an All-Ireland final? Well, it meant the world to me last year, but obviously not getting over the line um, was heartbreaking. But I think just the same, like I've got my Ashburn medal, I've got a county medal, but this is this is the one you want, the big one. Like the club, the club's where it all starts. That's where you that's where you left your first hurl and you kind of want to get to the highest level and succeed at the highest or you want yeah you just want to succeed in your club so I think a way all our medal the club would would sit well in the mantelpiece I must say and for your family as well I know you were telling me before that it, this is massive for your family they're very involved with the club too oh yeah definitely like my mom and dad have been involved in many teams taking me between county and club and I know they want the best for me and they've seen me do well, but I think just when it's club, like club's different to county and to colleges. So no, I think like they I'll have I'll always have their support um on the good and bad days. Like um they were definitely there for me last year after the All Ireland final. So hopefully we'll just keep that support and hopefully we'll get over the line and kind of make it a big one for them and give them a reason to celebrate. Oh, brilliant, Roisin. Well, thanks a million. The very best of luck in the All-Ireland semi-final. Thank you very much. We're delighted to be joined now by AIB Ambassador Camogie Star Maria Trudy of Saris Fields in Galway ahead of this weekend's AIB Camogie All-Ireland Club Championship semi-finals and for the release of the first full episode of Meet Hashtag The Toughest. It's a new content series from AIB that will showcase some of the final stages of this year's AIB Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships screw footage captured by cameras worn by the players for the first time in Gaelic games. Well, it's great to get a chance to speak to you ahead of the semi-finals. How are you feeling for them? Yeah, really, really looking forward to it. You know, it's it's exciting time of, of the club calendar year and we're just so grateful to be able to be there um, into the stage of the championship into the All-Ireland semi-finals. So yeah, we're, we're really, really looking forward to it. Really exciting times ahead. And it's exciting as well because the, the first episode of Meet Hashtag The Touches is coming out. So it's where club players are going to be wearing cameras for the very first time. So we got to see a, a little bit of the footage from the from the last day, which is amazing to see. Do you think this is something that Gaelic Games should bring in, that players wear, wear cameras on their jerseys? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, it's really, really exciting and, and just to be, able to, to be able to see that the snippet, obviously, of it that we've seen so far, you know, to see things from the perspective of the players and actually on the pitch and inside those kind of white lines, you know, even management and substitute and things like that wouldn't even even see that. So to be able to see, you know, what it, like the kind of encouragement and different things that you'd be giving to players or, you know, trying to wind up for a score or whatever it is and, and looking in front of you in space and things like that. So it's really, really exciting. And I think, you know, it'll definitely be when, when the series do start to come out, it'll be really, really cool to see it. And, and I suppose looking from a player's point of view for the outsiders to be able to see, you know, this is what we do and this is what we see in the pitch in front of us. Yeah, and it'll probably grow the game as well. And that's probably a big positive that will come out of it. Oh yeah, definitely. It absolutely will. Yeah, like the one of the things is the physicality. You know, it's always spoke about more. We want to have more physicality, and we're definitely seeing that now. And I think for people to be able to see it close up, they'll maybe appreciate the game a little bit more. Yeah, I think so. And I suppose players now, you know, we're all doing that little bit of S and C and things like that, and be that little bit in the gym or whatever. And we do want that. We do want that physicality. And I suppose. It might look like much when you're looking into it, but when you're actually there getting the hit or if you're giving a hit or whatever it is, you know, there is physicality to the game and I suppose that's the way we want it. And for Sarsfield then, a club that's well known at this stage, uh, three All-Ireland titles, the reigning All-Ireland champions. How much of an impact has that had on the club as a whole, winning All-Ireland titles? Oh, I think it's huge, you know, and for us growing back, we probably a lot of us would look back on, on the teams, you know, the early 90s that had won their, you know, two All-Irelands back to back. And I suppose we always kind of wondered, oh, I wonder what that would ever feel like to get there. And I wonder what it would ever be like, you know, even at that stage, you know, to win a senior county title. And I suppose that now we are kind of there and we we have done it um it's it's been absolutely huge i think you know especially for kind of underage players like that and, and girls keeping playing the game and things like that they can see what that success has felt like you know a lot of them they've been at the game they've been on the pitch with us after it they know what it feels like and i suppose it's great that they have seen that and will continue and hopefully strive to get to that position themselves 
So I was speaking to, to a student there from Dixborough, I think, for Penny. I'm just asking her, what is the difference you think for her squad or her team to be making all Ireland semi finals? Like, obviously, you have a talent for the squad, like Sarsfield do, but what, what else is the difference? Is it the, the community? Is it the people involved? Is it the placement of the team? What is it for you, Maria, and Sarsfield, do you think you're having the success? Um. Well, I suppose I think, you know, we are a really, really close group of, group of players and, you know, we, we started out in senior ranks first in club and we were getting by, we were getting hammered by everyone, but we just knew, you know, we had to stick together. You know, we're a really, really close group and even, you know, the management, we've had the same management with us, with us for the last couple of years and we're just really close and we're really, really tight knit. And I suppose that closeness, and you know, and wanting to do it for each other. And I suppose we've set probably set standards over the last couple of years for ourselves that we have reached. And you know, we won't we won't accept anything less un, unless we meet those standards. So I suppose we expect a certain amount from each other, but we also have huge respect for each other and we're really, really close. So I think that definitely plays a part in it. And with a lot of the girls maybe living elsewhere and maybe in Dublin and things like that, how does it work for training? Like do the girls always come home? Do they do their own bit or, or how does it work that? Yeah, so in fairness, the girls are always there. So like we would have girls, you know, between college, you know, we have some in, in Sligo and Dublin and girls working in there in Dublin. And, you know, I suppose they're they're always that training, you know, like unless they really, really can't be there, they will be there. So they all travel up and back better. better they travel, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they travel up and back. And, you know, it's, it's not easy. Like it's a couple of hours without taking training out of it on the road, you know, rushing from maybe work or school or whatever it is to try and get there. But... I suppose that they want to be there, you know, as I said, you know, we all, we all have standards for each other and, you know, they will do, everyone will do their best to be at training. And it's a fifth consecutive Galway title that we, we won this year. You know, that must be incredible because it's very hard to get out of Galway, first off. Oh yeah, it definitely is. And I think um, it's probably, you know, the group of players that we have at the moment. And I think, you know, we've been very lucky to win any county final or get into the county finals that we got to, you know, Galway is so competitive. And like, you know, even for ourselves, it, you know, every year is a new year. You have different girls coming in and you might have different girls leaving panels and so on. So you have a different group every year. So you just don't know how it's going to go. And I suppose we just take it, you know, game by game, either first round, second round. Hopefully you get further than that to a semi-final, get to a final and, you know, that's the way you kind of start out. Each game is a stepping stone and you just hope that things go well and, and, and matches go well because you just don't know how they're going to go on the day. But I suppose we've just been lucky with the group of players that we have at the moment. You know, we've we've really good, like, drive and determination that, you know, we want to win, okay? Like, and we, we, we've, like, a desire to win. So I suppose it's just the group at the moment, you know, we're, it's a really, really special group and we just have a really good worth ethic and, and we want to win and we want to do better and get better. Definitely proven that, that is for sure. And there is no Connacht Championship. Would you like to see that introduced? Would you like to be able to be competing for Connacht, I guess? Oh, definitely. I think so. You know, we've been we've been out of match match practice now for for a couple of weeks as, as we have no um kind of championship and and you can see in the other provincial championships there like how tough the games actually are. So I think they'd be a huge benefit. You know, if if we were able to have that kind of championship, so definitely, I think if it was possible and feasible, that we definitely would love to be involved in a kind of championship. Yeah, and I'd say as a player and what you want to achieve, I'm sure like a kind of title would be a special thing to have as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely would. And, and I suppose, as I said, the biggest thing probably is, is the kind of the out of match practice, really. You know what I mean? And you can see how competitive the games have been for the last couple of weeks. And, you know, as players, we want to be playing matches and, and you know, we want we want those tough games and it would be something and hopefully, you know, maybe in the future it can be something that can be put in place. Yeah, that would be great to see. Well, it's two Sarsfield's team in the All-Ireland semi-finals so Sarsfield's a court that you're coming up against. What do you know about them and what can you expect from them? Yeah, so we wouldn't really know overly a lot about them. Um, You know, obviously the last couple of years we've heard that they're, that they're a great team and, um, you know, looking at looking on at the match the last day against um Drum and Inch, obviously we have played those twice now in in two um All Ireland semi finals and just about got over them, you know, really really tough game. So watching on the last day, you know, Saracens of Cork, they're a really really impressive outfit, one to fifteen, you know, they're really athletic, great stick players, great hurlers, you know, they're they're really really good and really really impressive. So we have a huge challenge ahead of us, you know, all well able to score, well able to strike from distance. 
you know, back are, backs are really sticky, like an end tight, and you know, you won't get Anthony easy off them. So we have a huge challenge ahead of us. What would it mean to you and Anthony are going to get over the line and be back in an All Ireland final in Croke Park? Oh, I think I think it would it would mean everything. Um, I know people might say, oh, you have to be sick of it now, and you know, but absolutely not, absolutely not. You know, every every time you don't know when you're and if you're going to get there. So I suppose you have to relish every opportunity you, you get. So I suppose it would it would mean absolutely everything to get back into an All Ireland club final. But as I said, we have a huge challenge ahead of us, so there's no guarantees that we'll be there at all. And tell me a little bit about your your management and your background team. I was down in the club last year for um a little documentary I did with Jamal McGrath and Hopper McGrath, her dad as well. He's obviously the, the manager there and he's still there again this year. Tell us a little bit about the, the background team. Yeah, so Hopper is still there. He's been with us now for the last couple of years and, and I suppose it's so it's great to have someone like that involved in the club. You know, he he's hitting every ball with us. I'd say if he could, he'd be out lining out himself with us. Like, you know, so it's great to have someone that has, you know, such a belief in us and such great heart and love for the club. Um and I suppose then we have Kevin Ward, he's our, our trainer and you know, he's been brilliant. We've had him with us for the last couple of years, you know, and the training sessions he's done have been second to none. You know, he's he's an absolutely excellent excellent trainers and one of the best that you'll that you'll ever come across and and this year now we have um Kevin Curley he's in with us in our management team um and I suppose he's been a great addition as well you know he's he's really calm and I suppose he, you know he's he's a great talker and he talks us through you know there might be certain plays or things like that or you know just if you need that voice of calmness you know to be like okay relax next ball whatever Kevin is always there so I suppose we're really really lucky with the the backroom team and management management team that we have um you know their heart is fully in it they're 100 percent for Sarsfields and it's absolutely great to have people like that oh brilliant and you'll be hoping to get a great support now in the semi-final yeah, hopefully, hopefully we will. Like, um, it's obviously it's down in in Mallow, so you know the pitch is supposed to be lovely. It's supposed to be a lovely ground, so hopefully we get good support down there, and and we'll just go out and hopefully do our best. Oh, brilliant, Maria. Well, thanks so much for coming on, and very best of luck with the All Ireland semi final. Thanks, Maria Ashley.